Hello and welcome to our small group stream. If you're joining us for the first time, my name's Jeff and I'm one of the assistant pastors here at Birmingham Vineyard. So I'm just going to chat about a few things um, that struck me from Sunday's talk and hopefully you'll find that interesting and helpful as you meet in your small groups um, online and chat about these things. So do go to our website and check out the small group notes where there's a summary of the talk, some questions and a, a challenge or activity. Um, so check that out. And so on Sunday, uh, Ruth Page talked to us um, from Jonah 1, verse 17 to 210, primarily looking at the prayer of Jonah from inside the belly of the fish. And so um, firstly, she talked about the fact that when we hit rock bottom, God is always there with mercy to save us. But that salvation might not look like we expect. For Jonah, it was a sea creature. For us, it was the cross. And then she encouraged us to learn to lament, to learn to come to God honestly with the whole range of emotions that we feel. She also encouraged us um, to bring those emotions to him, but not to get stuck there. But as Jonah does, to come to a place of thanks, of remembering God's love and salvation. And for us, that salvation is found in Jesus. And we looked at how Jonah's um, time in the whale before he was spit out on land mirrors Jesus's time. He spent three days in the grave before raising to life. And that it's him, he is our hope and our salvation. It's through his um, death and resurrection that we are saved and we find hope and that we can know God's grace and mercy. And so probably the biggest thing that struck me from what Ruth had to say was that idea of severe mercies. The idea that actually um, in the most difficult times of our life, they can be a gift from God and a mercy from God. I've definitely found that in my own life that actually it's often through the most difficult times or through my greatest failures that God has done his most profound work in me, where I have changed and transformed the most and also where I've grown most in my relationship with God. And so I think um, part of that is because it's in those times that it's revealed what we really believe about ourselves, what we believe about others and what we believe about God. And it's also that in those moments where we feel the least worthy, that we come to find most profoundly and experience most profoundly God's love and God's mercy for us. And it's really easy in those moments, in those difficult times, especially when they're brought on by our own failings like Jonah, to disappear into a place of shame and guilt and regret. And those things are totally understandable, but they're really not helpful. The reality is we cannot change the past, but we can change the future. And so it's important in those moments to come to God with how we really feel and allow him to pick us up, to examine ourselves, examine what this situation is revealing about ourselves and see how we can change to make the future better. And so on that note, I think um, there's a really important um, part of Jonah's prayer is one of repentance that, that Ruth talked about as well. And the um, reformers had a, had a catchphrase that said, all of the Christian life is about repentance. And what that really meant is that actually there never comes a point in our life, in this life anyway, in our journey with Jesus in this life, where we, ne where we need to stop examining ourselves, saying sorry to God, changing the way we think, and learning and growing. Now that could f sound a little bit discouraging, but I hope it sounds actually hopeful. For all of us are aware of our failings. And I know for myself that I get frustrated all the time, like, am I still dealing with this stuff? 
I thought I'd be further along than this. But actually, that is what this Christian life is about. It's about learning and growing and becoming more like Jesus and learning more about God and growing in that relationship. And it's often through those times of reflecting, through those times of saying sorry, through those times of change, that is how we learn and grow as Christians. So don't give up. Keep going. Don't be discouraged. And I think that's where I really found a place of encouragement in the story of Jonah. I think I'm just amazed by the mercy of God that actually Jonah's disobedience doesn't disqualify him. That's one of the things that absolutely blows me away. That Jonah runs in the completely opposite direction and God doesn't give up. God is determined to use Jonah to achieve the purposes he has for him, but also he is determined to teach Jonah this important lesson that he's trying to teach him. The lesson of his mercy for Jonah, but also his mercy for the nations. So God pursues Jonah. He sends a storm, he sends a fish, and ultimately the fish delivers Jonah to Nineveh. God never gives up on him and Jonah's disobedience doesn't disqualify him from what the promises that God has for him. I find that amazing and an amazing message of hope for my own life that actually it's my disobedience doesn't disqualify me from what God has for me and God is determined to make me into the person that he has called me to be and to achieve the things through my life that he wants to and he is going to pursue me no matter what. I find that absolutely amazing and incredibly hopeful. Okay, so I think I really want to leave it there. That actually in our greatest difficulties and our greatest failures, those can be the moments where God is doing the most profound work and where we can grow and change and learn the most about God. That all of our life is about repentance, reflecting on ourselves, saying sorry to God, changing the way we think and learning and growing. And to the importance of remembering that our disobedience doesn't disqualify us from God's plans for our life and his purposes and his promises that God pursues us with his mercy and is determined to achieve what he wants through our life and in our hearts. So let's come to God in prayer with our full spectrum of emotions, being honest to him. I know that sometimes I can often feel like I'm only meant to come to God happy. I'm only meant to come to him from a place of thankfulness and praise and gratitude. But Jonah has a wonderful example of honesty and the Psalms give us a wonderful example of honesty. And so let's come to God honestly. Now, is it true that we always have something to be grateful for and thankful for because of what Jesus has done? Yes. But it's also true that God wants to meet us in an honest place. So with that, let's pray. (sighs) Yeah, Father God, we just thank you that you love us. We thank you that we can come to you just as we are and that you welcome us just as we are right now. But God, we thank you that you love us so much that you're not willing to leave us where we are. But by the power of your Holy Spirit, in your love and in your grace and in your mercy, you change and transform us to be more like your son, Jesus. We ask, would you come? Would you meet us by your Holy Spirit? And would you teach us, God, to trust you in every circumstance, to turn to you in every circumstance, to push into the growth that you have for us in every season, to remember your love, your grace and your mercy,
Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me. And uh, do join us each weekday, Monday to Friday, on Facebook Live for our afternoon prayers at one o'clock. And you can also join us on Sundays online at birminghamvineyard.online.church um, for our services at 10 a.m., 11.30 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. So um, do stay connected. I will see you around. Have a great week. God bless. Bye.